Hello, this is Pastor Dennis Cho at Stream of Praise. Thanks for joining me today. Today I will be sharing with you from the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verse 3. When the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they resorted to a ruse. They went as a delegation whose donkeys were worn out stacks and old wineskins, crack and mended. They put worn and patched sandals on their feet and wore old clothes. All the bread of the food supply was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the Israelites, We have come from a distant country. Make a treaty with us. At this point of their journey, all the enemies of the nation of Israel gathering forces to fight against them. But one of them, the Gibeonites, were smarter than that. They came up with a ruse, a trick, and they came to Israel and tricked the Israelites into making a treaty of friendship with them. It was a treaty that the Israelites later regretted, but they could do nothing to get themselves out of it. It was a very messy situation in which there was no easy way out. And the reason why the, Is the people of Israel failed in Joshua chapter 9 is clearly spelled out in verse 14. It says, the Israelites sampled their provisions, but they did not inquire of the Lord. Everything seems to check out to them. They checked out their story. They checked out their food. Everything seems to make sense. So they figure, you know what? There is no, no need for us to consult the Lord. I think this we can make the decision on our own. Let's just make this treaty with them. You know, the Bible tells us and reminds us again and again not to rely on our own understanding. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. And with this spiritual wisdom and spiritual discernment, God calls us to guard our hearts. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So the Bible again tells us and reminds us to always consult him. Always ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord for wisdom in everything that we do. Because from him comes wisdom, comes discernment. But we as humans do make mistakes. We all make mistakes, no matter how well-meaning and how sincere we may be. It may be a rash word that was spoken out of anger that we can never take back. It may be a bad decision, a business decision or personal decision that we can not easily undo. It may be a mo moment of passion that, that destroyed a lifetime of trust that can never, we can never imagine that we can ever restore again. But whatever it may be, the question we ask ourselves, what can we do? What can we do if we ever get ourselves into a situation, into a messy situation, just like how the Israelites got themselves into in this, in this chapter, in which there is no easy way out? But there is good news, because in God, there is always grace. There is always grace. God is an expert in making things right. Even in the most messy situation, he can make things beautiful again. You know, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, it says that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, this does not mean that we will not have to live with what we have done or we there is no consequence to our actions. But what it does mean is that even in the mess or in the mistakes that we have done, that there is still hope and there is still grace. And even in this story in Joshua chapter 9, there is an eventual redemption for both Israel and for Gibeon. You know, do you know that Gibeon became a nation that were servants at the tabernacle? Uh, they were part of the work at the tabernacle, just as Joshua had commanded them. And Gibeon became a priestly city. And during the days of David and Solomon, the Ark of the, the Covenant 
was often found in the city of Gibeon. And at least one of David's mighty men was a Gibeonite. Can you imagine that? And God spoke to Solomon at Gibeon. And even after the destruction of Jerusalem, when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem to build up the walls again, the Gibeonites were there to give him a helping hand. Now, this is such a beautiful ending to something that initially may seem to be such a big mess, both for the Israelites and for the Gibeonites who came out as liars when they came to Israel. To Israel. Because God is a God of grace. And even today, are you in a bind today because of something that you have done? Are you in a difficult situation in which there is no easy way out? I can say that God is here for you. He is here for you. And Easter, which we just celebrated last weekend, is a perfect demonstration of God's love and grace for his people. When there is no way out, there is a way that God has made for us because he loves us, because he's here to give us a hope in the future. So if today you are in need of hope, you are in need of a way out because of something that may have happened, no matter what it is, God is here for you. Would you come to him today? Let's pray. Dear God, today we come to you in our weaknesses and even within our mistakes, no matter what it is. We trust that you are a God of redemption. You are a God of hope. Would you come and draw close to us and help us? Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of redemption. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.